Hello, my Kako. I sincerely hope that you and your families are safe and well. I wish I could be speaking to you in person, uh, but as you well know, we live in a new surreal world where virtual presentations and Zoom meetings are now the norm and poo-poos and networking and conferences are a, are a thing of the past, at least, at least for now. First, I'd like to mahalo Ken Love and his team for putting together this 30th annual Hawaii Tropical Fruit Growers Association Conference, and I, and I certainly appreciate you all tuning in. I love the theme, keeping it local, uh, because really that's, that's what it's all about, focusing on what makes Hawaii unique at the local level and keeping that focus in all that we do. As chair of the Ag Committee in the Senate for the past five years, uh, Ken invited me to give a 2020 legislative wrap-up. So let's get to it. Uh, some funding from the Federal CARES Act and other USDA programs have assisted local farmers through the Coronavirus Food Assistance Program and the Families Food Box Program. And for that, I'd like to give a shout out to my daughter, Congresswoman Tulsi, and the other members of our Hawaii Congressional Delegation. So mahalo for your efforts, you guys. Unfortunately, our ag sector has been hit hard with hotels and many rest restaurants uh, cutting back tremendously on their orders. Uh, CSAs have increased big time to fill a gap, which is obviously a good thing. Our State Department of Ag has helped out with their COVID-19 emergency farmer relief grant program and their loan program. Farm Bureau, uh, they've also stepped up with its Farm to Car initiative. Uh, the Hawaii Farmers Union uh, has been participating in a food distribution program on Maui. And groups like the Ag Response and Recovery Working Group, they've been working to chart a new future for ag during and after the crisis. As far as the legislative session, we started on the third Wednesday of January, as we do every year. But instead of ending the first week of May, like we normally do, things got weird. Uh, what ended up happening was three mini sessions. The first uh, mini session ended on March 16th, when the 2020 legislative session officially closed down due to the COVID-19 virus. The second mini session was from May 11th to the 21st, where we addressed some of the emergency issues related to COVID-19. Uh, Hawaii received one and a quarter billion dollars from the Fed's uh, Coronavirus Aid, Relief and Economic Security Act, otherwise known as the CARES Act. Uh, state government received $863 million of that funding and $387 million went directly to the city and county of Honolulu. We directed $175 million to Hawaii, Kauai, and Maui counties to address their COVID-19 needs, uh, $40 million to the Hawaii Emergency Management Agency, HEMA, and then we put $636 million into our rainy day fund for future spending. During this time, we finalized a $31 billion biennium operating budget and a $5 billion construction budget. A big concern at the ledge is that we're facing a a $2.3 billion budget hole that we have to fill. And I'm beyond frustrated. Uh, let's see, what's the word? I am, I'm pissed off <laughs> that we continue to provide the Department of Agriculture with only three tenths to four tenths of 1% of their operating budget. This is way too low, obviously way too low for us to diversify our economy amid COVID and to truly become more uh, food self-sufficient here in paradise. So here's a rundown of some of the funding that we appropriated for construction projects for, for agriculture. Uh, 500,000 to uh, UH CTAR for irrigation improvement at the Kula Maui Ag Station. $200,000 for repair and maintenance of a farm road in the Hamakua district of Hawaii Island. Uh, two and a half million dollars for exploratory well for ag use in North Kahala, Hawaii Island. Six hundred thousand dollars for improvement to the interior access road uh, and Kekaha Ditch Bridge crossing on Kauai. One hundred fifty thousand dollars for a PV solar system for the Anui Nui Fisheries Research Center on Oahu, and five million dollars for improvements to the Kalailoa Harvesting Facility in West Oahu, also known as God's Country. Uh, we also confirmed Morris Atta as the Deputy Director of the Department of Ag. And then, mini session three. Uh, going into the, the mini session, the third mini session, we, 
which began on June 22nd and ended on July 10th, all the committee chairs were informed by Senate President Ron Kochi from Kauai that we could only consider bills that had no revenue impact. In other words, no money bills. As many of you know, since 2014, one of my top priorities has been getting a commercial hemp bill passed. And after six years of incremental progress toward legalizing hemp, we're finally at a place where farmers can legally grow as much hemp as they can handle. Uh, you may have seen in the news in August, uh, Hawaii had the, the country's highest insured unemployment rate in the nation as a percentage of the labor force. Hello. It's well known that hemp is a huge revenue generating commodity. So I'm hopeful that with the passing of HB 1819, which is now Act 14 into law, that the growing of hemp will help stimulate our economy and create opportunities amid our COVID-19 pandemic and beyond. Uh, Hawaii will finally get to benefit in a much bigger way from this incredible crop that can create jobs and investment and help heal our land. Uh, specifically, Act 14 allows our farmers to apply for licenses directly with the USDA to grow, process, and sell industrial hemp products. And, and by the way, some background, uh, it, it's been a long time coming. Right. Since former uh, former Governor Cayetano, he declared December 14th, 1999 as Hawaii Industrial Hemp Day. And unfortunately, our government fell asleep for about 15 years, as governments tend to do sometimes. But at the request of a dear uh, friend of mine, John Rogers, who passed away recently from cancer, I introduced four bills from 2014 to 2018 that became law, including a two-year UH research study, a five-year pilot project, and a move from the four-month growing season to year-round, and also establishing a special fund where the licensing fees and potential fines uh, could be deposited and used uh, solely for the hemp program operations. So with three growing seasons a year and, and strong interest here locally and on the mainland, we're finally able to truly capitalize on the uniqueness of Hawaii to grow and market hemp. Uh, Act 14 allows our farmers uh, to grow as much acreage as they want to process and sell hemp products, including CBD. And so applying directly to the USDA, instead of using state funds to set up a hemp agency here, it saves Hawaii half a million dollars in administrative and other program fees. Um, we currently have 47 hemp farmers licensed under the pilot program with over 200 employees. Uh, they're on all the islands except Lanai. The Hawaii Hemp Farmers uh, Association estimates that the local hemp industry currently is valued at over $35 million. And to give you an idea of what's happening uh, nationally, as of October 2019, the U.S. hemp-derived CBD market is expected to reach $23.7 billion by 2023. And that's up from the current value of $5 billion. And that's according to uh, the Brighton Group. Uh, farmers planted an estimated 288,000 acres of industrial hemp in the U.S. in 2019. And that was up from 78,000 acres in 2018. And so that's the most hemp planted in the world. So farmers can now, as I said, can submit their applications to the USDA to become licensed. Uh, the USDA will take up to 60 days to process their applications. On October 31st this year, uh, the hemp pilot program will cease to be, uh, per the farm bill that was passed, uh, all the existing pilot hemp farmers and new ones who apply for a USDA license will then transition to the new USDA program. Uh, New York made an announcement recently that they're, uh, they're going to be ending their state-based program and going with the USDA model. Uh, Kentucky is in the process of, of doing the same. So the USDA will likely become the model across the board. Uh, hemp is an amazing crop that, that can create over 25,000 incredible products, uh, including my Aloha Hemp shirt here. Uh, the key is developing a, a cottage industry with Hawaii branding that will set us apart from global competition so that we have, you know, the 
Hawaiian hemp granola with the hula girl on the label and Hawaiian hemp shampoo with the guy strumming his ukulele underneath the coconut tree. You know, because everybody, everyone loves the Hawaii brand. Quick story, I was at a national hemp conference in Kentucky a few years ago and my colleagues and I were sitting around talking story after one of the sessions and Kentucky was bragging because they had thousands of acres in hemp and said, oh man, we're going to kill it. We're going to take over the market and everything. And I kind of raised my hand. And I said, you know what? You guys don't have a chance. Once Hawaii gets in the market with the Hawaii hemp aloha shirts and Hawaii whatever, you guys are, are going down. And they were, yeah, oh, sit down, Gabbard. You don't know what you're talking about. And I looked over at the, one of the senators or representatives from Colorado, and, and I said, oh, excuse me, Colorado, and, and how, many, uh, how many harvests do you get a year? <laughs> Knowing that we get three. And the guy from Colorado, he, he, he said, he looked at me and, well, I can't do the middle finger, but he said, we, <laughs> we get one. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. In short, hemp, hemp, hooray. Um, and moving on, uh, during this session, we directed $648 million in CARES Act funding to programs to help the unemployed, rent assistance, uh, personal protective equipment uh, purchasing, also thermal screening purchases, security protocols. Uh, we directed $36 million to de uh, DBED, the Department of Business, Economic Development, and Tourism, uh, Hawaii Works Program for the UH, uh, UH CTAR and UH uh, community colleges to provide training and retraining opportunities for the unemployed, which includes ag. The governor, unfortunately, uh, he cut that amount to $10 million to a line item veto on July 30th, but it also included $3 million to DBED to support the fishing industry. Uh, we passed two other ag-related bills this session, uh, SB 2701. Uh, it's a bill that I authored that was recommended by the Subdivision and Condominium Property Regimes on Ag Lands uh, Working Group uh, that was initiated by Act 245 in 2019 uh, under the Office of Planning. And with that, the idea of that bill is to prevent fake farms, basically. It allows the appropriate agencies, such as the County Fire Department and county permitting agencies to enter the property upon reasonable notice to the owner or occupant and to investigate agricultural buildings for compliance with the current law. And the second bill was HB 1854. Uh, this bill requires the Department of Ag and the Hawaii Ant Lab to come up with and post on their website best practices as it applies to the use of pesticides for little fire ant control. And it also clarifies that uh, training for invasive species be based on best available technology and best practices. So in conclusion, obviously there's a lot of apprehension and uncertainty as we look to the future with COVID. If I get reelected on November 3rd, uh, going into the 21, 2021 session starting in January, right now I'm looking at making sure we dedicate resources to programs like one, uh, Go Farm, uh, to get new farmers trained uh, two, the creation of a new program, the Department of Ag, uh, which will provide grants to new farmers and ranchers. And three, the creation of more food hubs. Uh, during her remaining few months in Congress, Tulsi is focused on uh, bringing more federal assistance to our farmers as part of the HEROES Act that's currently being debated. Uh, one prickly issue that I want to look at next session is the problem of solar projects displacing existing farmers and using up good farmlands. As one of the champions of our 2015 100% renewable energy law, uh, back then I was the chair of the uh, Energy and Environment Committee, I'm definitely pro-solar, but we've got to find more of a balance to ensure the protection of our, our ag lands. Uh, personally, I think we should be looking more closely at massive offshore, out of sight wind farms to reach our energy goals. But I do value your input, so please share your ideas on these legislative uh, ideas uh, or any other ag issues that you have uh, that you might, may want to look. You may want me to look at uh, this upcoming session. So mahalo and stay safe. Aloha.